All right, what's up? Uh, this is a two video day upload. Two day, two, one day, two video upload. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of talk about some stuff uh, and show off to you what I consider some of my favorite cards. Now, this isn't all of them, um, as you can see. Now, I brought my binder with my Yankees hits in it. Um, so I'll kind of go through this and then I'll flip through that. And it uh, doesn't really matter how long this video is. I just kind of want to put it out there because I'm not going to show these off for a while. Um, I basically destroyed my setup uh, that I had for display to remove all these. So I'm going to have to reset that up again. Um, and yeah. Um, but without further ado... Uh, here are some of my favorite cards in my collection right now. Um, something I noticed the other day, um, and I don't know why this is in this video, to be honest with you. It's just kind of here because somebody traded me this on Twitter. It's one out of ten, but it's Jacoby Ellsbury. I actually, you'll see if I flip through this binder... Um, have the complete set or like was trying to build the rainbow of this because I got this card and it was so cheap and easy to do it because even by 2014 he had completely just washed out of the league he was not worth the contract he was given it's a real shame that he just did that to us I guess Red Sox fans really really should not hate this guy because honestly he did you a solid um but before I you know keep going I saw on, t on YouTube, I had looked up um, Ricky Russo. He was a, a card YouTuber um, for a long time. And he was famous for dropping these insane videos where he showed off these crazy cards with unbelievable patches and autographs. And this was in a time where that stuff was kind of in its infancy. This was like 2010 before things really got nuts. And uh, I saw that he had died, so... And all those old videos, can't find him anymore. His Him showing off his Yankees PC, which was unreal, dude. Absolutely unreal. And you can't find it anymore. It's gone. So it's sad, you know? Um, a guy who was in this community for a long time, um, who, you know, a lot of people in this community grew up watching, like me, um... For him to just not be there anymore and like not be able to find some of that that stuff that for me inspired me to get back into collecting. I mean, this is a this card right here is a prime example of me like my era of collecting. This stuff was hot, and you'll see there's another one in here like this um, that came from this 2009-2010 era. Um, you know, it's unreal. But yeah, like we, we grew up on him and, you know, to not be able to find that content that was the reason we got back into this uh, years later um, kind of sucks, you know, and I wish that uh, things have been different and he hadn't died. I think his wife either is selling or has sold his entire collection um, because, you know, what the hell is she going to do with it? Um but yeah, man, some of that stuff, I hope it hits the market again, because some of that stuff was crazy. Not that I could afford it, um, but, you know, it sure would be nice to at least see it again. Now, this is kind of nuts. I feel personally like every single time I've opened a pack of 2018 update past um, when it was commonly found in stores, I always pull the Soto. Um, you know, this one, you could see the touch right there in the top left corners. Ooh, crazy out of focus. Yeah, but there is a touch of white. I don't know how to get this. I think I got to put another light back on my desk here, um, or my table, but yeah, you know, that's one. Um, I have a couple more, two. All of these were pack pulled. And then three. 
pack pole by myself. Um, you know, so I had a nice little Soto collection. I have a couple other ones in this in this stack here, but let's not pull from this stack to because all right, basically, I have a stack to my left. I have a stack to my right, and I have some cards down the middle. Let's go to the left here. Um, so I got this Maris. Um, it's water damaged at the top, but it's still very cool. It was a gift. 65 Maris. Sweet card, man. Real sweet. You'll notice I have uh, quite a few of him. Uh, Justin Verlander, uh, 2006 rookie. Uh, I don't know how long I've had this card for. This is one of those things that I got somewhere and I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. Um, but I, I don't... <sighs> Sorry, I was drinking some water. I don't remember if that's a card I had from when I was a kid or whatever. Uh, 59, Stan the Man, uh, off-center. Uh, clearly, this border over here, this left-hand border is definitely thicker. Um, yeah, there it is again. Uh, it's got some shit on the front of it. Uh, possibly was written on. <laughs> yeah, it was. It is written on. That's on the card. But hey, man, it doesn't matter to me. Part of the fi Oh, there's another mark. Part of the 59 set. You know? Beautiful. Love it. Definitely the highlight of that set for me right now. Um, but you'll see some more of them sprinkled throughout. Uh, this is a 73 Carl Yumstremski. This is not the first version of this card I owned. I owned a version of this card where the card was so badly off-centered it was cut just above his hat. And the name of the next player on the sheet was like up here. It was pretty wild. Um... But, yeah, Nearman 7 from GMA. Uh, kind of cool. I liked it. It was inexpensive, like 5 bucks. I was on a real Hall of Fame kick back then. Uh, Trevor Story, clearly authentic, uh, with a 10 auto, graded 9. You know, this kid, uh, real great player, and not a lot of people care. Um very slept on. You know, they always say, oh, he's a product, of course. The kid can hit. What do you want? You know, like, sure, the road splits might be bad, but, like, it just because of where you get drafted and where you play your career does not mean you should be considered a good player. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Mint 9 Beckett. And, like, here's the thing, too, right? A, a lot of people, like, the Hall of Fame vote this year, like, nobody got in. Everybody knows that by now. But, like, why did Todd Helton, like, get no votes? Like, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he played for the Rockies his whole career, right? So the man was real good and, like, hit 400, like, three seasons in a row. Like, at the end of his career. He was a monster. And everybody's just like, oh, he played at course his whole career. His numbers are inflated. But, like, why is that his fault? Like, he took advantage of the fact that he was good in that ballpark. He was consistently good for them for years. And how the heck are you going to average 400 if you hit 400 at home and 100 on the road? Like, some of these writers are saying is, like, the, the difference of, like, the cores of... They just shut up, man. Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, Warren Spawn. <laughs> I love how just, like, 57. I love how I just, like, transition, like, into that. Uh, this is the oldest card I own. This is a 1952 Ted Klazuski. Uh, pretty cool. Look at that fielding average. <laughs> now we just like consider that war, right? Like that's part of war. That's like the main thing. I don't know. Dude, baseball stats are like the cool, like, when I listen to somebody talk about them, I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Like, he's either a really good or really bad player based on those numbers. Uh, I'm going to put this one to the side for a second. Um, and that's, like, shit on the case. Um, like, yeah, like, he's really good or really bad based on these numbers, right? Like, that clearly makes a lot of sense. And then, um, you know, and then, like, 
I go to talk about the stats and I don't really know what the hell I'm saying. Like, they don't make sense when I hear people who are not really smart about this stuff talk about it. If that makes sense. You know? Um, where the heck was I going with this, man? Uh, here's a Lou Brock. Oh, the, the thing I put to the rest in peace, by the way, to Lou Brock. Here's the one I put to the side. This is exactly what I was talking about with the, like, this is the error I came back to collecting in. This was actually before I quit the first time. Um, when I quit the first time, it was probably 2009 and 2010 because I don't have a lot of 2010 top space ball. I'm not even sure what the logo was for that. Like, I know what the... This is the 2008 one. Is the 2009 one the one with the little, like, um, base down here? Like, one of them had a base with, like, T for top on it or, or something. I don't really remember. Um, but, yeah, that card was real popular when I was a kid. I wanted it so bad. Um, so I got it uh, now. This is a Soto rookie that I think is, like, really underrated. I love this card. I love the look of this card. It screams young Hall of Famer rookie cards. I don't I don't know. You know, it might be early to say he's a Hall of Famer, but this card just it screams iconic and I have 3 of them. Um also his archives in the 59 setting, but that's just cuz I love the 59 design. Trey Turner another slept on player. Um, this guy, he's the host of, uh, Hot Ones. It's a YouTube series where they eat chicken wings and he interviews celebrities. Um, that's also why I bought the Tom Segura, but also cause I knew him, uh, as a stand-up comedian, but I got this guy's auto and Segura's auto in the same set. Um, just because they belong together, you know, it's my favorite episode. The one where he interviews Tom Segura, this, this card, man, this is sick. Um, right down to the parental advisory explicit content logo. Like, whew, that is, this Project 2020, whoever this artist, I think this was King Cartoon, right? Or Cartoon? Don Crawley. Don C. Oh, Don C. Yeah. Killed it. Absolutely killed that one. Uh, where to next? Let's go with this. This has a funky story. So this is the local team. Uh, he's the organist. Uh, and everybody knows Fred Costello here in, in Rochester. And it's number to 10. And it's just cool. Like the red and the red wings and yeah. Christian Yelich. This card, man, I pulled it and I was like, sick. I know who that guy is. And I put it away. And then like last year I was like, I have a Christian Yelich auto somewhere. I swear to God. Um, it was either him or who was that other kid who was appearing for the Marlins in like every single freaking set. Uh, man, what's his name? I don't even remember, but I was like, I have somebody's auto and it's either really good or that other player who I can't think of. And it was Christian Yelich. Um, and he was awful last year and the year before, from what I remember, uh, Warner Blakely, this dude, um, I heard somebody say that he was a really good prospect and they were watching him and they were like, you know, it's probably because the Angels have um, such, you know, decent players and a lot of talent in their system that this guy's getting overlooked and he was drafted in the fourth round and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's – but he's a shortstop who hits for power. And he was like – and that's what, you know, every team wants. Um, so his first Bowman auto was like 10 bucks on about it. Um, so we'll see. I mean, you know – uh, I, I pulled a couple of other cards down here, too, um, that kind of show what I'm thinking about right now in terms of cards, um, and th we'll get to those later. Um, Clemente, 73, just iconic design. Love it. This is the Clemente photo I think of. Um, look at that, man. Look. Do it, I wish. This thing would focus. Look at that. Look at those averages. 311, th uh, 
What does that say? 253, 289, 296, 314, 351, 312, 320, 339, 329. Dude, the man batted over 300, like, for a decade. That's wild, you know? What a great guy. And just a great player, good human being. It's taken from us too soon, man. Sucks. Another Maris. Um, like I said, you'll see this kind of a theme in my collection here. Uh, my uncle turned me on to Maris, and I just kind of never looked back. Um, casual Tatis to 10 patch auto. Uh, that one I've actually been trying to get rid of. Um, Tommy Heinrich, you know, he's a Yankee. What can I say? He's a Yankee. Um, nice vintage jersey patches. Gotta get a case for that card. Don't have one. Like I said earlier... Tough to come by, man. Uh, where do we go now with this? Let's go here. Nice little Clint from Gypsy Queen. Patch Auto. That's just a beautiful card, man. I love that photograph. That's sick. It's absolutely sick. That's to 50. Um, with the pinstripe and everything, you know, I think this year, with Brett Gardner not coming back, it's Clint's outfield, man. You know, I think he's going to play a lot more. And he's pretty damn good. Uh, Chapman, Sanchez, and Tanaka. Man. It, it sucks that he had to go. I get it. Financially, he didn't fit anymore. Especially with bringing in Kluber and Tayon. But, man, Gary Sanchez, if he doesn't play well this season, he might be the biggest waste of time the Yankees have had in a long time. In a long time. And it really sucks because we haven't had a good catcher since Posada. We had Ivan Rodriguez, who was like 45 for one season. We had Brian McCann, who was decent for like one season. Had like one good year, maybe two. But like, who else? Like, who, who, Chad Moeller, Jose Molina. Fuck, who else do we have, man? Who was the guy we had before Gary? Oh, J.R. Murphy, Greg Bird. Like, get out of here, bro. No, absolutely not. Uh, Ty Cobb. Uh, wow, Ty Cobb. Yeah, right. No, pipe dream. Tris Speaker. Three ninety nine, tier one. Uh, this card, man, was too cool to not get. On top, we have Felix Hernandez, who is one of the greatest pitchers of the last like ten years, fifteen years, right? Like Mad Bum, like okay, Scherzer, Mad Bum. You know who else do you put in that mix? Um. Clayton, Kershaw, um, Strasburg, maybe, and Felix Hernandez. Like, he's on that list. He's Even if he's not top five, he's top ten of the best pitchers of the last 15 years. And, uh, and then you have Jabba Chamberlain, who Yankee phenom, like, when he was a rookie, he was, like, the talk of the town. There were the Jabba rules. You know, he could only pitch a certain amount of innings because he threw so hard and he was, like, you know, too, so young. They didn't want to, like, blow his arm out and he's going to be a Yankee for the rest of his career and blah, blah, blah. And then he just, like, they had, like, the the uh, the game in Cleveland where he got attacked by the Nats and that was it. And it's just cool to see these two guys who were, at the time, considered the best players like, coming up for their teams. And then one of them guys might get in the Hall of Fame, hopefully, and the other one's not going to come anywhere close. You know? So. Um, here's a cool one. 51 Rookie of the Year, Gil McDougal, cut auto. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. 
Uh, love National Treasures. <coughs> this is a recent discovery. You'll see that reflected in this video. Here's a whitey. No, this crap is not on the card. Uh, if we pull it out. The card's actually like... Surface-wise is not bad. You know? But uh, the, the corners and the top up there are kind of iffy. and uh, This is not a card I would ever get graded. This is a card I got in Cooperstown. Uh, crazy low price. I think this is a 53. Could be wrong, but I think it is. <coughs> Here's a cool one. 1970 Thurman Munson rookie. Along with a Dave McDonald. Needless to say, one of those guys was better than the other. Uh, these cards I have a couple of. I know I have... Yeah, I was going to say, I know I have the Maris, which is right here. But I also have the Rizzuto somewhere. And, uh, yeah, not sure what year those are from either, but they're cool. Here's another Maris. Uh, I believe this is the 64. Yeah, so this is the year after he hit all them home runs. Or a couple years after. It was 61, right? 61 and 61? Yeah. Garrett Cole Spectrum. Uh, patch Auto. It's a 10. The reason I got this, man, he's in a Yankee uniform. You can tell by the blue and the pinstripes on the pants. It says New York down here. This is a New York Yankees card, but it's got an Astros patch. And I love the colors on that patch. And it just, to me, is like... when With with him leaving there, I feel like that's the, the demise of the Astros franchise. Like, I know they made the playoffs last year and whatever, but, like, they're not going to do that consistently again. Like, it's coming to an end for them. Uh, 59 Maris. I need another drink. Cool one for the 59 set, and it's Maris. I got that from a guy at a show. Another Maris. I got this in a trade. I traded the Keg Craig Kimbrell, one of one. It's in the name uh, patch for this Maris to 25 and a Cal Ripken and a Rod book, which is at my parents' house. Another Maris patch. There's a lot of these, many different Yankees. They're not numbered. Um, it's kind of like a manufacturer's patch, but still Maris, still cool. Had that a while. Uh, here's a Chapman from his All-Star Game jersey. One, two, three color, four color, I guess. Patch. And that's numbered to uh, 25. Sick one. Here's a Bill Dickey to 25. From Flawless, another severely underrated set. Here's Herb Pennick from Flawless. This is the Sapphire. It's a real Sapphire in there. This card's beautiful. And it's sealed. Still sealed with the Flawless tape, which I don't think you can read because the camera's not focusing well. We got DiMaggio with the Ruby. Beautiful. Beautiful card. Everything about this card. Just incredible. It was my oldest banger. My, you know, it's got a soft corner. It's uh, off center. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's my oldest friend, you know. I've had this card for a long, long time. And this is the second version of this card, second copy of this card that I've owned. I've told that story a bunch of times, not going to tell it again. The Topps Redemption Auto, Glaber Torres rookie card, Bowman Chrome. It's a $4.99. Uh, sweet card. Man, I'm, I'm hoping Glaber does well, but I just am not seeing it. I think if my money's on one of the Yankees young players to, to do well again, I know Glaber's been an all-star, but last year was low. He showed up to camp out of shape. He didn't hit well. Um, my money's on Clint 
over Glaber right now. I know that sounds crazy, but it is. Uh, Bill Dickey, one of one, printing plate. The Bat Relic. Uh, well, let's go here. Uh, this is a Donruss, 2005. This guy, man, I remember he played for the Red Wings. I remember when he played for them. Um, but if you open her up, man, who put Lou Ford on the same side of the card as Harmon Killebrew? Like Santana and Killebrew should be on one side, Ford, Hunter, and Stewart on the other. And Stewart should be here. Like it should be Killebrew, Santana, Hunter, uh, and then take your pick with, with this one or that one. You know, probably Stewart and then Ford. Ford didn't last too long in America. Um, but, yeah, two nice little patches there. Kind of cool. Screw it. Here's another book card. Uh, Joe Sewell. Cleveland. Cut auto. To 10. Uh, let's go with some new stuff now. Uh, this is... The same series as that Hernandez and Jabba Chamberlain, but this is Joe Pepitone and Roy White. And why they're on a card together, who knows? Uh, but it's cool, it's kind of fluky. I like it, so I bought it. And uh, the card store near me, man, <laughs> there's not many, um, but there's one in the city. Um... And I won't say the name or anything like that. But the guy, he definitely overprices cards. Um, he And he doesn't really know the value of cards anymore. He knows what the books all say, but he doesn't know what's happening even right now in the card market. Um, which is like crazy because that's where all your profits are. So he's overvaluing cards and undervaluing cards. Today I overheard him say... That a LeBron James Upper Deck Rookie Auto is only about $325. There is no way in hell a LeBron... I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is also the same guy who was like... Tried to sell me a Tim Lincecum um, Rookie Auto for $300. Like, this is not 2012, sir. Like, no thank you. Um, but anyway... Um, I picked that card up there today. And this is where I picked a lot of these cards you're going to see up today. Not that A-Rod. Uh, that was eBay. This came from there. Because um, I didn't have that one yet. This is eBay. Spectra. Rookie card. To 99 Like I said, my money's on Clint. And that card is beautiful. And there's no reason to hate it. Because the only Yankees logo you could possibly get would be on his batting helmet. And at that angle, you might not even get it. This showed up randomly in the mail. Uh, I mean, okay. These are all sh cards that came from the shop. I picked up some Allen and Ginter Chrome minis of Cody Bellinger. Hank Aaron, just because he just recently passed away. And Bob Gibson, um, one of my favorite pitchers, and he recently passed away. I think. Pretty sure. Um... I picked up some random cards for the 59 set. Just guys I knew I didn't have. I hadn't seen any of these cards before, so I was like, all right, I'll buy them. Um, some Yankees pitcher. Look, look, look at this, man. 350 Now, I know that on eBay, you might get this for 350 with shipping and handling. But it... I don't I don't know. I just feel like here's another like classic example. This next card is eight dollars. It's Donruss Optic. The red to forty nine. Seventy nine. But for I don't know. I feel like I could snipe that card off of eBay for a lot cheaper, but that's just me. Like here's Mike Ford Gold. Twenty twenty. Mike Ford, a bench player. Two bucks. I guess it is pretty fair. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I've had a lot of bad experiences. Sometimes I felt like I was getting ripped off. The Tim Lincecum one really pissed me off. I was thinking I could get a Tim Lincecum auto for... I don't know. 
90. Maybe and at 90, I still would have been like, that's too much for me right now. But 300 seemed... He had a Brett Gardner autograph for 40 bucks. It's not worth 40 bucks. It's just not. No matter what the market says. A-Rod Fleer tradition. Uh, Josh, see, I've never heard of this guy. Three bucks to 150. Staten Island Yankees, single A. Maybe he'll be good. Who knows? He was drafted not recent, not long ago, apparently. They are talking about LSU 2019. Just tops chrome, whatever. Insert. Oh. Come on, tripod. Uh, yeah, love this card. Classic. Lots of Hall of Famers. My Tebow rookie, I've told the story about how I got this at the National before. Just go back and literally any of my top 10 card videos or whatever will have this card in there. So, uh, Machado. And, you know, like, the reason I'm doing this right now is because um, some of these cards you would just never see. Like, I don't know. Unless I did a video on rookie cards, like, you probably wouldn't see any of the rookie cards. Like, Dustin May, I, I love this one. Here's another prospect that I picked up based on a recommendation, Austin Hendrick. I just figured I'd pick up one of his first Bowman Chromes when they were, like, you know, under five bucks. And... I, See what happens along with this guy here, Pete Crow Armstrong. Heard good things. Um, so why not? If either one of them pan out or the other guy, uh, you know, good for me. Uh, Todd Frazier, one of one. Again, probably seen this video if you've watched my Todd Frazier. Or the, I'm sorry, this card if you've watched my other Todd Frazier videos. Along with this one. This is my all-time favorite cards. This card I tweeted a picture of at Todd Frazier. He was like, that's sweet. Like, congrats. Like, you know, I remember these. These were cool. It was really cool. It was really cool to see that. Um, speaking of which, from here on out, it's probably all just him, his stuff. I got another one of these coming. It was five bucks. I have th three already. Um, this is his gold rookie card to 50. And the orange to 25. Um, I don't know if I've told this story before, but when I went to the National, um, this guy told me he was buying all the trouts, like this exact card, but trout, um, to 25. And he was going to burn them live on camera, 24 of them, so that he just had the one. And he could like artificially inflate the market and then cash out at a huge price. I don't know why he thought everybody... First of all, like... Why do you think everybody in the card world has the money to afford a trout that you've artificially blown the market up on? Like, like how much do you think you're going to get for this? Like, the trout Super Fractor Rookie Auto just recently sold for a ridiculous amount of money. I think it was like, what, $5 million or some sh something like that? Maybe I'm thinking of a different card, but maybe I'm thinking of a mantle. Maybe I'm thinking of the PSA 952 mantle. Not that one. Okay, but a, a Trout Super Factor Rookie Auto just sold for a lot recently. And, like, I don't know. But I love this card. It's just all of that to tell you that. Um, Bowman Chrome Red to 5. Oh, here's a Machado. It's a 10. I remember pulling this card. That was really cool. Uh, Chrome Purple Rookie Card. Rookie Card. Yeah, I don't know why I said it like that. Here's Bryce Harper Ginter. This card, I remember, like, people were, like, trying to get this card. And I don't know why I have that memory. It could just be a total artificial memory. But I remember people chasing this card and, like, calling it, like, his best rookie card or something. And then here's another one, his rookie. And then this I just got recently, Independence Day to 76. And that's it, man. Um, that's everything that I... Oh, I also have this Josh Hader auto. Um, that's it that I have for the stack. Um, the only other thing that I can do now is uh, I'm just going to point out a couple of things. 
Um, here's those Ellsberries I was talking about. Um, what was it? Oh, I got this Robinson Cano not long ago. It's a cool one. You know, I know the guy cheated, but he wasn't cheating when he was a Yankee. I mean, not to my knowledge, so. I forgot what else I wanted to show. I don't know, man. I got some cool, weird stuff in here. Like Sonny Gray. Remember when he was a Yankee, bro? What trip. Oh, yeah. These are new. But I showed these off earlier in the other video. Oh, crap. All right. Well, that's going to be the end of that with that pile hitting the floor. Um, it's been 36 minutes, man. Hope you enjoyed it.